to no effect without purpose. That's what in vain means. Just like he says in 2 Corinthians, after he talks about this reconciliation, we then as workers together with him, that's the word synergy, that's where that word synergy comes from, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain, without purpose and to no effect. He used that word elsewhere about laboring in vain among people. I hope that my work among you has not been in vain. In other words, without purpose and to no effect. Well, that's what happens. See, the grace of God working with the dynamic behind it of faithful faithfulness that led you into a godly sorrow of repentance, the grace has appeared to all men, as he teaches in Titus. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching or admonishing, chastising us, to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts, live soberly and righteously and godly in this present age. See, that's the grace of God that has appeared to all men. Don't have to have a special appearing, a special calling, a special anointing. God is, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to me. Because faith, the rudiments of faith, you've got to believe that God is and that he rewards those that what? Diligently seek him. We'll show you the process of this as we move on here. There's just so much information here. I'm trying to present it in a logical manner, scripture by scripture, but it all ties together so simply. See, because this grace of God coming in, appearing to all men, if it's not received to, without purpose and in vain, like faith alone and you're justified in your sins, well, then it's in vain. It's without purpose. Because the purpose of it was what? To redeem you from every lawless deed, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem, that's redemption, Redemption up there on the board. Faith, grace, redemption. That he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. That's the purpose behind redemption. Now, are the people in the church churches redeemed from every lawless deed? Well, certainly not. They're practices of lawlessness. They're the workers of iniquity that Matthew 7, 21 through 23 is talking about, where they'll come in the great judgment, and we did wonderful works in your name, and we supported the missions, and we gave trillions of dollars to this and that. But you depart from me, you workers of iniquity, because you never, be, you never got out of the foolish. You never became a, a sheep. You remained a goat. You never became wise. You remained foolish, just like all the parables teach. But they're taught that the parables, well, that's not doctrine. See, the parables aren't doctrine. Doctrine is faith alone justified in your sins. No, that's not doctrine at all. That's a fallacy. And that's where people have been deceived. Be ye not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. If you sow according to the flesh, you're going to reap destruction. If you sow according to the Spirit, you'll reap life everlasting. That's the hope of eternal life that's yet to be reaped in the age to come. Yeah, you have remission, the free gift offered, freely given, like Romans 3 talks about. Certainly, you have that free gift of remission of past sins. It says, for we, in verse 20, 324, Romans 3.24, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now, some people just stop with the redemption, you know, freely given. That's, that's it. You circle that in the verse. For having being justified freely, justified in your sins, right? Justification apart from works, Romans chapter 3. That's what they connect that with, Romans chapter 4. You're, he that justifieth the ungodly, he that worketh not, but justifieth the ungodly. They connect that with justified freely by his grace. They don't ever get to the redemption part, which means release from bondage. So without the release from bondage, there's no pardon, forgiveness of sin. You see what I mean? They work together. Again, it's a synergy working process. Workers together, he said. The biblical word is synergy. There's no such thing as monogism. They made that up. That's, that's a made-up theology word. No, you workers together with God, so you do not receive this in vain, and this redemption takes place through this dynamic process of repentance, clearing of wrongdoing, vindication of your past life zeal, fear of God, and finally purity of heart at the end. As 2 Corinthians 7, 10, and 11 talk about that we've talked about in hundreds of my videos. So the gift offered, freely given, the remission of past sins, 
the hope of eternal life is in Christ, yes, but not without the redemption that is by faith, which is a belief from the heart. Well, what? The myth, what's it also say in Romans, Romans 10? With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Well, how does he believe unto righteousness if all his righteousness is filthy rags, none righteous, and everybody sins and falls short of the glory of God? You see how that negates everything the scriptures teach about doing the right thing or being even being reckoned righteous by an accounting because you were faithful to God. So in justification, it equals purity of heart, obedience to the truth, and faithfulness to Jesus Christ. That's the state of justification in Christ, right there. If that is not happening, if all they're doing is rolling around babbling in tongues and feeling good and having some kind of euphoric experience, this never happened. I don't care how much you think you're talking to the Spirit or that you have revelation from God. You want to, you want to bring the genie out of the bottle in apostolic times again. We want to bring back the book of Acts, but you won't bring back the righteousness that's in Christ. You won't bring back the the preaching of righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come. No, you won't bring those things back. In repentance proven by deeds. No, man has a process in this. The working dynamic of faith working by love. Galatians 5, 6. Purifying the heart by obedience to the truth. Since you purified your soul through obedience to the truth through the Spirit, love one another fervently with a pure heart. The whole verse says, 1 Peter 1, 22. Soul, heart, same thing. And then faith establishes and upholds the law. See, the law of faith, like in Romans 3.27, he talks about what? Do we, we, make, we make void? What is it boasting? Is it excluded by what law? Of works? Of circumcision? Of ritual? Well, no. There's nothing to boast in because those things couldn't purify the heart. No, but by the law of faith. And what's the law of faith? Of faithfulness to God. The dynamic of exactly what faith means. In both Hebrew and the Greek, it means faithfulness, fidelity, steadfastness, firmness. That's the definition of faith. And belief, believe in God, like they'll always say in the book of John, he that believeth in Jesus Christ be saved. It's a synonym of faith. So it means the same thing. It just means a strong, confident persuasion that's going to lead to that type of faithfulness based on a purity of heart. So therefore, then you're not receiving the grace of God in vain to no effect and without purpose. So many people do. It's without purpose because the rebellious heart remains. There was no crucifixion of the old man of sin. He did not die. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin, Romans 6, 6 and 7. See, how can you who have died to sin live any longer therein as he begins the argument up there? But see, if you've never died to sin, if you've never ceased from that rebellion, like I say, when I'm talking about sin, I'm talking about a rebellious heart of willful disobedience to God. That ceases. That does not go on. You are not the prodigal again and again. You do not fall back into the pig pen when you're in this state of justification and redemption in Christ. It does not happen. There's a possibility. It's always a possibility if you don't watch and add to your faith, run a race with endurance do the things that Scripture says. Certainly, you still have free will. There's temptations in the world. You still have inclinations and desires to focus upon God and focus them on the right things in the life. You're not a robot. You don't become an automaton. But the likelihood of doing it, like it's a foregone conclusion, as most everybody teaches, it's just a foregone. You're going to sin. You're going to sin. You're going to sin. Look at all the past saints. How can you base anything that the past people did on what we are promised in Christ? What we are promised in Christ, just, just like I said, I talked about the exceedingly great and precious promises. In 2 Peter chapter 1. See, like I said, the, he, he, the gift offered, freely given, is the remission by the blood. See, there's no other way to have your past sins remitted except by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only way. How much more shall the blood of Christ through the eternal spirit cleanse your conscience, purge your conscience of dead works so that you may serve the living God? And that is the purpose of the new covenant. It goes on to say Hebrews 9, 14 and 15. For this reason, for this purpose, 
the new covenant was established to purge you of those dead works of rebellion so that you can serve